Well, hello again, YouTube and Facebook friends. Uh, we just went over to the fabricator's place and brought back our new bag racks. Uh, these are version 2.0. So uh, do a little walk down the trailer here and kind of show you what we have, and then we'll put it all together. Stay tuned. All right, so what we did, these are vertical arms. They're gonna stick straight out from the actual uh, bag racks themselves and uh, actually support the bag in the open style. Um, probably started where we should have ended, but this is the, the foot plate, and we kind of designed these where you can pick them up and move them around with the, the pallet forks. Uh, the uprights, they're gonna go into these pockets here, I'm trying to make things a little bit easier if somebody wanted to have one of these shipped around, and we can kind of go that direction with it. So we got three of them on here, so this is enough for a, a cord worth of bags. All right, so here's what we have. There's a basic foot plate that goes down. That's what your pallet is gonna sit on. Then we have the H frame that goes inside the big uprights here and here. So then when they're standing up, it'll look like this next one right here. So then it's just a matter of putting the arms up and on it. And what we did with these arms, they're the same size diameter here as the sleeve is down there. So that'll slide over this H piece. And then we have um, a nut and bolt for adjusting, you know, height and locking things on. And so when everything is on, it will look like this. So when the arms are up and over, it's a three quarter inch uh, socket or wrench here and basically that just puts tension on the H pipe and then you can kind of go adjustable up or down kind of what we were seeing for uh, the first one that we put together it needs to be right about six feet with the pallet underneath it And then it is 48 inches wide at the bottom, so your fork spread all the way out if you want to pick up and move, you know, the rack around that way. Probably the next batch that we're going to do, it's going to be 42 inches wide. That way it's, it'll fit right on a pallet. Go 42 wide, 48 deep. These are 60 inches deep uh, because of the Bobcat Toolcat. It's got like a radius lift on it, and whenever my daughters were helping me, uh, it would push the, the rack as they were picking up because they wouldn't back up as they were picking up. So it kind of would move the, the rack around a little bit and then the conveyor wouldn't line up the way that it was supposed to be. So we'd build them a little bit deeper and just trying to, on the first round here, to kind of see what they look like. So this is version 2.0 and then we'll get them moved over behind the, uh, the conveyor over yonder there and uh, line everything up and try to fill some bags this afternoon. All right, so like I said, we kind of built these bottom pieces so you can pick them up and move them around with the forks. So the next one's version 2.2 or 2.1, whatever I decide, we're gonna shrink it up just a little bit more. These are 48 inches wide right now, which kind of has my forks maxed out. But I think if we do them at 42 wide, just my overall problem is I don't want to narrow up the top piece is too much because you want a pretty good spread on the bag to keep it open so um, we're going to play with this one later on this afternoon but that's what it looks like hooked up to the forks you know for easy transport around the wood yard because assembled they're pretty heavy all right so from right to left we have version 1.0 1.1 and now the 2.0s so kind of what we did uh, early on I wasn't sure how heavy duty these had to be so we were kind of using like a three inch channel that wrapped around here on the very first one. And then we were drilling holes to go in to pin them tight because we thought when you were lifting them up, you know, maybe the, the uprights would go with it. So then when we built the next ones, we kind of downsized the, uh, the three inch angle and just went to regular angle iron or from channel, I guess, to angle. And then I wasn't drilling the hole through all the way again because we were just kind of letting it float because of what the thought was. You pull this out, pull it up, you can take the pin, and then the whole rack would crash down, and then that would take the, the weight off of the loop. So we were doing that for a while. But that kind of got old. And then so I went to the old Google machine, 
and uh, found some pictures of stands and then that's where we came up with this idea so if you look at you know relatively here um, top of the tube to top of the hook you know where the bag is going to sit is going to be about the same i've got to measure this one up just a little bit more and get them locked on but we're going to hang the bags everything's going to kind of run on this um the conveyor itself i got to pick it up a little bit to get past the excess that's sticking up on the bags or on the rack itself um which is right here you can kind of see where it's gonna gonna hit coming around and the reason we left them a little bit higher i'm thinking about doing like a an infeed kind of funnel on the top of these so if you were to dump in with like a regular skid steer bucket you know eight feet wide or something it would be able to funnel down in there we've got a couple of requests for those so just kind of playing with it um i do have to flip the tires here on the conveyor to go full radius and it's just uh one little keeper bolt there and i think that's like an inch inch and a quarter or something on the main one just to loosen that and we'll get these flipped around but uh yeah that's gonna be it's gonna be the setup here moving forward all right, so there is nothing different between these bags and those bags other than white mosquito netting and black mosquito netting. So I just wanted to kind of show you what we were doing here. Um, the hooks as they are, um, keep it pretty, pretty taut left to right and front to back. It was just when we came in with the, the skid steer or the tool cat, the theory was you'd pick it up from the bottom and then the straps would kind of pop off the the red hooks there or like the black hooks on the other one and sometimes two of them would do it three of them would do it and on a very rare occasion you get all four to pop off if i was in the tool cat it's not a big deal because there's the doors on the side so you can get out and do what you have to do but if you're in the skid steer there's no way on a bobcat to go out through the front and still open that door so that's when we started getting into these where you would just pull this pin out and um it's gonna make a bunch of noise if i can do it without yep. and then we would drop that and it would come off but the problem was when it had weight on it it was really tough to uh to knock that out like the kids could do it but we'd have to do it with like a hammer or something but it's what we did for a couple of years and uh we got by with it and it works just fine a lot of guys have copied the the template out there and again i don't mind if you do kind of copy what we have going on just give us a phone call for the bags and you know that's where we're making our money is on the the bags being a dealer for nnz so this is bag rack version 2.0 um the horizontal arms are pretty much going to mimic like a set of pallet forks basically so what the theory is is when you pick it up from the bottom that takes the weight off the top and then everything should slide right off without ever having to leave the machine or do anything different um and we've been doing it with kind of playing around with this with the the pallet fork stretched all the way out you know on the tool cat and uh it seems to be working pretty well um again it is it is pretty tight left to right so when we shrink down the the base plate to 42 inches from 44 i think that's going to be some of the the deal um, without keeping it quite so tight but we can probably raise up the arms too so that's where we have you know just a little bit more up here to go through yet uh, we did go ahead and raise the the conveyor some to clear the the uprights and we also did flip the tires to radius uh, these were like an inch and an eighth up here and that was a 9 16 just to kind of make sure everything stays nice and true going down the road is what that one is but we're in full-on radius mode there um i kind of have a magnet and a string here to kind of help me gauge where you know center of the the bag rack is and this will work that full radius uh, back and forth. And that's what we have going on for today. All right, well, uh, everything is in formation here behind me. Uh, the three new bag racks 
and the two existing ones we'll kind of do a little comparison trying to get those uh, filled bags off of there we'll have to get the 1824 diesel fired up and start sending uh, some stuff through it but for now i am aj shaver with shaver sales if there's anything we can ever get you a quote on from the brute force stuff to the nnz log lift firewood bags uh, call me it's 833 splitter that's 833-775-4887 you can also email me it's sales at shaver we hope to see you next time thanks for watching